I'm Rob from Smartboat Innovations. The last few months, I've been busy coding new integrations for our Smartboat. I've developed two new integrations, one for TCP Wi-Fi and one for Serial. The Smart 0183 TCP accepts 0183 network data via TCP or Wi-Fi, so there is no need to connect any cables. If you have an NMEA gateway device that transmits wirelessly, or if you have Signal K, you can now connect these to our Home Assistant based SmartBoat system. It's almost plug and play. You just need to define your IP address and port, and away you go. It's all ready. The Smart 0183 serial is an improvement to my previous Smart 0183 integration that was described in this video. This is used if you would like to connect a 0183 network via cables. Both these integrations can be installed via Hacks. Here's a short video that shows you how to install Hacks on your system. Designed with user friendliness in mind, these integrations feature a menu-driven interface for a hassle-free setup. So no more entering YAML configuration files. Moreover, they are engineered to automatically generate Home Assistant sensors based on the incoming 0183 network sentences, simplifying your smart burning experience significantly. So even if you add new devices in the future, it will auto-discover these devices. After these integrations have set up the sensors, you can create a dashboard to display them as gauges. You can also use this sensor data for monitors and alerts to stay informed and proactive. Once you have this network data within Home Assistant, you can create amazing automations based on the creator sensors. You can combine as many as you like with the logic you desire. For me, this is more important than just having pretty digital gauges. I want the system to alert me via an alarm or text-to-speech. When, for example, I am sailing downwind and the wind has changed direction for more than, say, 30 seconds, or if the wind speed or boat speed has increased or decreased. Or you can configure a set of rules to when you need to reef your sails based on the sailing angle and the wind speed and whatever other parameters you would like. In this video, I will go through how to install, configure, and connect to and use both of these integrations. So let's get started. So let's start with the TCP integration. So here we are in Home Assistant. We need to go to Hacks and then Integrations. In the top right hand corner, the three dots and we select custom repositories. Here we need to put the repository name. Now I've made it easy, you go to my website under code and scroll down until you get the smart 013 TCP. And on this page, I have the, the name of the custom repository. It's easiest if you just click it, go to the GitHub page and then just select the whole URL from the uh, search bar. You go back and then we paste it here category is integration and then add. So this will add it and you'll see up here that it's, it's added the integration with a, if you ever need to delete it, there's a red trash can on the right hand side. So we select that and it'll just take you to the readme page for the integration and the bottom right hand corner, you'll see the download button. So click that and then download again. Now if we go back, you'll see the integration is listed here and it's saying, saying pending restart. For any of these, these integrations, you need to restart Home Assistant. So we go restart. Uh, this will take a few minutes, so I'll speed it up. Okay, so now we go to settings and then integrations. And then we, bottom right hand, called add integration. And we just search for this one. So if you type in 183, you'll see it listed there. Select it. Now this is the, the simple configuration page. So you put in your... Uh, your device name, whatever you want to call it. I've got Signal K. So I'm using a Signal K server I set up for this demo. And then the IP address of the Signal K server and the port number, which is the default Signal K 10110. Then press submit. And that's all. That's all the configuration. And here it's already started to discover all the uh, 
the network sentences. Here you'll see the TCP integration. It's, and it's got 12 devices and 81 entities. So if you click on the devices, the 12 devices, these are grouped up uh, basically by manufacturer, which is basically a grouping like routing, transducer, or global positioning. It's, it's, it's a grouping of different sentences. And then the device name is the sentence sentence name to make it a bit more easy to understand. And the model number, the model name is the NMEA183 sentence ID. So if you go back to my web page, you can see there's a URL to find the NMEA183 sentences. So let's pick one of these. Let's say HTM. So we'll go back to the, this web page and let's find the HDM where it's defined. And here you can say it, it's got a bit more information, not much more information, about its heading magnetic and it's got one field. So if you go to that, that device, you can see it's got one sensor. If you click on that, you can already see the history. Um, if you click on the settings, you can see the sensor name. It's created HDM, which says the first, first field of the HDM sentence so if we look at another one like the GAL which is the global positioning one so let's do a search for GAL okay so here's a sentence from, from GAL it's got a few more fields like seven fields and there's a description for each now if we go back to this, click on the GAL it goes to that device and you can see the sensors it's automatically created and the values the current values so this is the latitude longitude either east east or west or north or south now, if you want to add these to a dashboard, let's just create a, quickly create a dashboard, a new dashboard from scratch. Let's pick an icon like a gauge and then create. We go back to settings, integrations, and the Smart 0183 TCP integration. So we can click on devices again. Now, if you want a, an easy way to add it to dashboard, it just add to dashboard here. Click on device and it'll add all the sensors to the dashboard. It's a real quick, easy way to get everything visible on one dashboard. You'll probably go through one at a time and add them yourself differently, but this is just, for this demonstration, it's, it just shows how easy it is to, to get all the, the sensors on a dashboard. So we get the heading magnetic, add it to the dashboard. And say the water temperature, add it to the dashboard. And let's do one more. Here's the wind speed. And here we have all those. So it's got the it's got the wind speed in kilometers, knots, and meters per second. So let's add all these to the dashboard. We're done. So if we go on to the left here to find our new dashboard. Smart PCP. And there we are. We have all the sensors. And that's it. It's all created. Now you, you're going to go off and then create nicer ones for yourself individually. But this is a this is a good start. Now we can also uh, reconfigure the sensor if you want to change the IP address or the port. Or if you need to reload the sensor for any reason or delete the, the integration. On Topaz, I have my dashboard based on these sensors like this. So that wraps up the TCP integration. Now I'm going to cover the serial integration. So first we have to connect the cables to our Raspberry Pi. Here we have our Raspberry Pi. On the back there are four USB ports and we can use any of these to plug in our USB to serial cable. It doesn't have to be the high speed one. So here's a USB to serial cable which is an RS-232 type. So we can plug that into any of the ports. Now we're going to use this with the 0183 network cable, which has three wires. So it's the RS-232 type. So here we have a RS-232 plug. It's a blank plug, so we can open it up. And inside there is screw terminals. So we're going to connect the transmit, which is the positive wire from our 0183 network cable. We're going to connect that to the number two pin. So number two pin is, is receive and this red wire is the transmit. And the other cable is the black, which is the ground from your network cable. We're gonna connect that to pin number five. Just tie it up, put it all together. J 
just connect the two and we have the RS232 connected up and ready. Now if you have an RS422 uh, cable, I don't have one here to demonstrate so I have to talk it through via the pictures. You need to have a RS422 to USB adapter. Now here I have a photo of the example. It has two transmit and two receive terminals and a ground. So what you need to do is identify the two transmit wires in your RS422 cable and connect that to the, the receive terminals here to receive plus and receive minus. So the transmit plus goes to the receive plus and the transit minus goes to the receive minus. And you, as this is a listener, you don't connect the ground. If you like to connect a 2000 network to my Smart0183, you'll need to use a commercial 2000 to 0183 converter. So one end of the converter will plug into your 2000 network back button. And the other end, if it has a USB plug, it will plug straight into our Raspberry Pi. Otherwise, you'll have a cable with four bare wires, and then you have to follow the instructions I provided earlier to use the RS422 plug and then the 422 to USB adapter. So here we are in Home Assistant. First, we need to go to Terminal. We need to check the, the which USB port is going to be assigned when we plug in the USB to the serial cable. So firstly, without the cable plugged in, we need to run a command. Uh, it's NLS slash dev, but I, to make it easier, I've put it onto my web page. Go there to home page, down to code, scroll down to miscellaneous commands. And then this, this the, the bottom of this command here, the ls slash dev pipe to grep USB. So copy that and go back and paste it into terminal. Remember, paste in terminal is control shift B, so it's control uppercase B. And this will display which USB devices are attached to the Raspberry Pi. And since we haven't plugged ours in, it should, should come up with none, or you might have some others already plugged in there. So now let's go ahead and plug the USB cable in from the serial to USB and turn on our instruments and just wait, say, 30 seconds. So let the system identify that the cable's plugged in. I'll speed it up and then run the command again and see, here we go. It's identify that TTY USB zero. This is, this is pretty much the default first device that's ever, ever allocated. Now let's go back to my, my website and copy this command. We're going to install a little app called Minicom so we can then look at the data that's coming into this via the USB device. Let's will install this command minicom. So done, let's go back and copy this minicom command. And it's, it's going to look at the device TTY USB 0, which is what we found. And minus B, 4800, it's saying the board rate or the speed is 4800, which is the normal default for, for 0183 networks. And if all goes well, you should have data coming out like this. Uh, if it's scrambled and unreadable, then probably your board rate is different. So it might be 9600, or if it's AIS data, it's 8400. So you might have to change that around. Now here you do a control A and then X to stop it all. And once it's stopped, just, just maybe take a screen print of the, the data so you can actually see what type of data you're getting. Uh, the first word is the, uh, the sentence IDs of the, the 0183 data. We can use them later. I mean, you don't need to, but it's just it's nice to know. And you can see they just repeat after a while. And then, so now that the cables are plugged into the Pi and we're receiving this serial NMEA data, we need to configure Home Assistant. So we go to Hacks, Integrations, the three dots in the top right hand corner, Custom Repositories. Now we need to go to my web page under code and scroll down and you get to the smart 0183 serial page and here i have the the hacks uh, repository so it's easiest if you click on it then go to the search bar and copy the url from here we'll go back to the repository paste it in and then we select the category as integration and then add You see here it's been added with the red trash can if you want to delete. And here's the readme page for the integration. 
down the bottom right hand corner is the a download button which we need to click then download again let's download it goes very fast now we just go back and again you you'll see there's a pending restart so we need to restart there's many ways to restart so i use developer tools and then restart from here so now we go to settings the device and service integrations add a new integration search for the integration by 183 and you'll hear you'll see the serial one so here's the configuration page we put a device name it's the port name is what we found out before but it's nearly always for the first one usb 0 and the board rate isn't always default to 4800 and we press submit and we'll go and start finding the the sensors on that uh on that serial connection I'm just, I actually have two NMA networks, so we'll add another one. So you can go to Add Hub and add another serial connection. And this is, I have a GPS, which is comes through a different serial connection. When it comes on USB 1, 4800 again. And then it's found quite a few. It takes a while to find these sensors, so give, give it a minute or so. So here you can see I have a NMA GPS in Instruments seven devices and five devices so if we look at the instrument ones these are basically the same instruments we had with the tcp integration but they're split over two hubs and here's the gps ones so this is created the same devices and sensors as we had in the uh, tcp integration at the start of the video so to add these to the dashboard just follow the exact same procedures i had in the tcp integration section Thank you for joining me today and exploring the incredible world of smart boating. If you found this video helpful and informative, I would appreciate if you hit the like button below. And if you'd like to stay updated with more exciting content on boating and technology, consider subscribing to my channel by clicking the subscribe button. Your support means a lot and helps me create more valuable videos like this. Until next time, hasta luego.